Welcome, everybody. I'm Brother Dan Gould, and I'm your host of a brand new program coming on VTN. In fact, this is our very first week, Prophecy in the Spotlight. I've got my co host sitting in the studio, and we've got an exciting show for you. Don't miss it. Stay tuned. This is Prophecy in the Spotlight. I'm your host, Brother Dan Gooden. Sitting with me, Dr. Charles Hiltabittle. This is a, a, our first airing on VTN, Victory Christian Television. We are sure, sure excited about, uh, about being here, and we're excited about you. And, uh, Doc, um, this is our very first our show. first for this network, For yes. Little Rock, Arkansas, Memphis, Tennessee, Hot Springs area. Uh, over 30 million people, they Wonderful. tell us, in the listening audience. Looking I'm sure we've got at least 28 million of them yes, watching amen. today. <laughs> but, uh, folks, we're going to be on every week at this time. And, uh, we're, in fact, we're doing a special show because we're also on Nationwide. We're on CTN, Christian Television Network, on Satellite and Dish. We've been on for almost two years and uh, uh, Nationwide. Uh, but we, we're doing a special show just for you. This is not going to be on our nationwide broadcast because we wanted to introduce ourselves to you. We wanted you to know who we are and, uh, and what we're doing here. So, so Doc, let's start with you. Tell, tell them a little bit about you and your background. Right. Well, I, of course, everybody calls me Dr. H because they can't say Hiltabittle. Yeah. And uh, I've been in the ministry uh, over 60 years pastored uh, 35, 38 years, um, been involved in various forms of ministry over the years. Right now I have what's called walk through time ministry where I take churches on a walk through the Bible and bring uh, science in the Bible and uh, prophecy, past, fulfilled, future, bring it together and walk through the Bible. And, and you also are involved with the museum. Yes. Tell I, me about that. I, well, I pastored in Dallas. Uh, we started the Creation Evidences uh, Foundation. Today it's called the Creation Evidences Museum of Texas you know, on the Paluxy River there in Glen Rose, Texas. That started out of the church where I pastored. And I've been uh, on the board of directors. I'm the executive vice president of Creation Evidences uh, Museum. And that's a Rose. pretty big deal. It is a big deal. Yes, it's a great opportunity to uh, share wonderful truth with the world. It's amazing things. And you've been basically uh, preaching as, as an evangelist, going to different churches oh, for yes. the last several years Yeah, now. for the last 10 years I've been on the road since I resigned pastoring. Okay. Yeah. Well, great. And you, uh, you and I met. Uh, let me just tell the folks who I am real quickly. I'm Evangelist Dan Goodwin. I pastored three churches over the years, and uh, and then I began began um, uh, writing. And I've written probably over 15 books. And Doc Doc has written books too. Yeah. And uh, um, but in 2014, my ministry took off with a book called God's Final Jubilee. That book has now become. A book called The Mystery of the Jubilee, but um, my ministry took off uh, as far as prophecy is concerned, probably around 2014, with that book coming out. And uh, I guess a couple years after that, uh, I got on uh, prophecy in the in the news out in Oklahoma City, J.R. Church's ministry. Many of you, I think that show used to air right here on this network. And uh, I used to get interviews there, and then eventually they asked me to become the host. So I hosted Prophecy in the News out in Oklahoma City for almost two years out there. And, uh, uh, and that's where Doc and I met. Um, I got a phone call, and it was Dr. Hiltabittle. And, uh, and Doc, you called me, and you had met somebody that knew me. Yeah, somebody had given <clears> me <throat> one of your books uh, back uh, before that, and I was coming back from the East Coast from a meeting and driving through nearby where you lived, and I gave you a call. So you called, and we, we went to the we Cracker Barrel, together. and we had yeah. lunch and talked, not realizing what God was getting no, ready to No, I had no do. idea that we were going to end up doing this. Yeah, because uh, it was a little while after that, Prossy News asked me to become the host, mm -hmm. and I said, and I, man, I, I needed people. I needed guests. <laughs> I needed some guests that I felt comfortable with because sure. uh, 
I'm a little, you, know, I'm, you and I are on right wing old fashioned King James Bible. <laughs> yeah, believers. we're the old fashioned kind of folks. Amen. Yeah, we are. And uh, you were my, I think you might have been my first guest. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Michael Smith, I brought him on. I think you might have been the first guest and the people loved you. And, and you and I really got yeah. close, got to know each other. Had no idea that a couple of years later uh, yeah. that ministry would close down and the Lord would have us start what we're doing. You and I began talking, even before Prosser News shut down, you and I began talking about starting our own program. Yes. And it just all of a sudden Prosser News was at the end and we weren't quite ready. No. We had to hustle. <laughs> and I think we missed one week and then our show come on the yeah. same slot that Prosser News had. God's been good. We, st uh, we need to let the folks know uh, we're, you're supported. Uh, we started with zero money. Uh, we've made it two years. By and the we still have zero and money. We still have zero money. But we're still here. Uh, it's because I believe it, Dan, it's because we're just old fashioned Bible. We're not out there chasing UFOs and aliens. We're just wa walking down Bible prophecy and sharing biblical yeah. truth for God's people. And that's what we're going to do in just a second. We're going to, we're going to share with, with you folks some samples and some little tidbits of what you're going to get on our program here every week. Uh, we're on the bottom shelf. We're real. We're King James Bible believers. We believe, thus saith the Lord. If God said it, it's, it's, that's what we believe. Amen. And uh, we're not going to get into this crazy stuff. We're not going to get into uh, uh, UFOs being flown by, uh, by, flying, uh, by uh, fallen angels and all that stuff. Uh, in fact, we're going to teach you the other side of that. We're going to give you what we believe the Bible really teaches about Amen. that stuff. And uh, so, uh, exciting days, Doc. God, yes. God brought us together. We are viewer supported. We ha we are totally relying on the people who watch to keep to, us on uh, that television. You know, donations yeah. and po we call it partnering with us. And uh, somehow, every three months, the money comes in, and, and, and we're able to pay the bill. We sweat, and, we, and, and oh yeah. no, the money's not here yet. And all of a sudden, we. Do, uh, we I know there are ministries out there that talk about faith and all this stuff. We really are a faith-based mission. Yeah. Yeah. Because and, uh, yeah, so we're going to need you to communicate with us. We'd love to hear from you that are listening to this network because we want to, this is kind of a trial run. We're going to stay for at least three months, but we, we want to we wanna know who's out there. We need you to contact us. Uh, the phone number scrolls here all the time, the, the website, and it'll, it, you'll see it pop up on the screen. And, uh, and you can, we'd like to know that you're listening on the VTN network. So uh, that would be a big help to us over the next several weeks to know that you're watching and yes. that you like to pray. You're welcome to give us some suggestions. If there's a topic you'd like us to talk about, um, feel free. And of course, you can get to our bookstore through the website. And uh, you can also donate by calling if you like. If you, you can donate by going to the website or you can yeah. call that 800 number and, and they'll help you out. Now, um, there's business hours for that 800 number, so you'll have to write it down and call on Monday or something. But, um, but you can email us. You can uh, go to the website. You can hit the donate button right there. And, uh, but, uh, but we'd love to talk to you. We'd love to know that you're out there and that you're watching. <coughs> so, Doc, I thought... Um, now that we've introduced ourselves to, the, to a yes. brand new audience, um, I, wanna, I want us to take a, couple, a few minutes and share some things that we do. Uh, you've got a verse for us. Um, yes. I, we're I, a prophecy ministry. We're going to yes. mostly talk about prophetic events. Absolutely. Give us, give us yes. the, the verse that uh, well, you had. Well, Paul's talking to Timothy, and in his first letter, chapter 4, it begins with this. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, uh, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I believe we're in those days. Yeah, no doubt. And we try to expose that. We try to share those truths. I've written uh, a lot of books and booklets, and I have all kinds of CDs and DVDs on various subjects. Uh, because these are the times we're living in, yeah. what Paul talked about. And we're going to have you talk about a couple of your things in just a second. Let me read the verse that I picked out to read for the, for the show today. This is 2 Timothy. He read us from 1 Timothy chapter 4. I'm going to be in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. It starts in verse 1. Um, this know also 
that in the last days perilous times shall come. Mm. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Mm. And, it, and it goes on from there, and we'll just stop right there. Does that, that sounds like today, I brother. I believe that's today. My yes. God, without natural affection. Oh, oh. the list is very evident we're at the last days. Yeah. Um, and as you often say, we're at the end of all things. Yeah, here we are at the end of all things. That's Amen. one of my little, I got it from the Lord of the Rings thing, but uh, <laughs> uh, I don't say it quite right, but I, I say it the way I like it. Here we are at the end of all things. And my, and my friend, we are at the end of yes. this thing. And uh, I have no doubt about that. And uh, so um, let's take a, a few minutes, Doc. Um, I'll go ahead and start if you go want. Yeah. Uh, I have a book here called Seven Clocks a Ticking. My wife will put that up there for you. Seven Clocks a Ticking. This is one of my newer books that I've written. Very exciting book. It actually has like over 20 full color pictures in here. But I give seven clocks that are all ticking down towards the, towards the rapture, basically, and uh, towards the second coming, I should say. There are no signs for the rapture. All the signs are for Christ coming on the that's white right. horse. But we know if, if that's getting close, the, that's the rapture is right. even closer. Amen. And uh, because we are pre-tribulation rapture. Yeah. And we'll and we'll share and we'll do some shows uh, as we go about our belief and yes. what we believe the Bible teaches about Amen. the rapture. Um, there are basically three views, pre-trib, mid-trib, mm -hmm. and post-trib. Right. And we are 100% without any, yes. any, uh, any doubt at all, yep. we are pre-trib, meaning we believe the Lord takes the church, the saints out of here before the mm -hmm. tribulation begins. Yep. And we're convinced of that. Um, God, you know, God brings, uh, you know, we're, we're going to suffer persecution. But we're not going to suffer the wrath of God. That's it. There's a big difference in big persecution difference. Yes. and the wrath of God. I even have a book on my website concerning uh, the seven things of concerning the rapture. And yeah. It might be a help to folks. All right. And my second book that I brought with me today, this is actually one of my newest books that just come out. This is called The Great End Time Distraction. And this talks about all this crazy stuff going crazy on. Crazy stuff. The, the thing called the Nephilim. A whole um, lot of prophecy ministries have gotten tangled up in with yeah. it. Extra. They're telling stuff. us that angels, fallen angels, came down in Genesis 6, saw human yeah. women, lusted after them, married them, and had children. That is physically, yeah. biblically, and spiritually yes. impossible. It well, didn't happen. It violates the law that God established on day number three of creation. Everything reproduces after its That's kind. That's right. And we've done a lot of shows on this yes. on our other network, and uh, we'll, we'll do some stuff on this network uh, coming up pretty soon. Um, the Truth About the Nephilim, Fallen Angels, and UFOs. This book is life-changing. It really is. Um, this book will help you understand, by the way, irrefutable. Irrefutable. Nobody has refuted what's written in this book. And the, and the evidence, and by the way, you have a yeah. chapter, uh, you've written yeah. some that you put in here for me. And uh, irrefutable, if you're on the fence or you're not sure what to believe about Genesis 6, yeah. the fallen angel, uh, sons of God passage, this book will, will open your eyes, I promise Amen. you. Uh, Doc, I've, had, yeah. I've got a preacher friend. He has been on the other side of this all of his life. He and I used to joke about it. And we're good friends. We're good friends even though we disagreed on this. Uh, I, I didn't throw him under the bus, and he didn't no. throw me under the bus. But when I wrote this book, I sent it to him. And he calls me on the phone. He says, Brother Goodwin, I'm with you now. He says, I, I'm a Bible believer. And he said, I can't refute what you see. That's right. You're absolutely right. Amen. And boy, what a compliment that was. I have a, I, uh, my website, I have a, a two-part DVD on the fact or fiction concerning the gap theory yeah. from the science side of this thing. And it goes right along with that. I mean, it's an impossible thing. And it does. The gap theory goes along with their, their teaching of the That's fallen angels. Because by using the gap theories where they get the, the idea of a pre-world before the creation of Genesis chapter 1. And it's not supported by the Bible. It's not even supported by the text in the Bible. They have another flood. They, they've invented uh, what they, they call the Luciferian something. flood. Yes. And I actually learned that from you. It's not even, it's not real. And, and so, uh, folks, we just, we're just down to earth Bible teachers, Bible preachers, and, and 
Yes. Yeah. But that, there are a lot of ideas out there that are supported by either something outside of the Bible or by taking the Bible out of its context and twisting it. Yeah. Yep. So, so why don't you uh, give us a little bit of some of the, uh, well, some of the other materials that, I, that that we've covered and that we will be covering is uh, one of the booklets that I have available is uh, uh, called the Great White Throne Judgment of God, and it's been really blessed of the Lord. Tell them to, a little to, bit about well, that concept. I, I just help people understand. People all the time say, "Well, why why is it that we get to the why is it the final thing in time?" The last thing in all of time is the great white throne judgment. Why, why didn't God judge the lost way back here a thousand years before, before the millennial reign? Because the Bible says their works do follow them. Uh -huh. And you take some of the things that maybe you do as a genera in your generation, it's going to affect the next generation and the next generation and, and, and things like Adolf Hitler did in World War II. Look at the ramifications of the resulting effects still. And, and so the final judgment of God cannot be properly done until that entire life's work has come to the end of time. And so I think it's a very helpful book. And that great white throne judgment is different than the judgment seat of Christ. Because different it, timing. It's the judgment of the lost. Right. And only the lost. And only the lost at the very end of time before yeah. God makes a new heaven and a new earth. Yes. Yeah. And, and everyone so that's at, what that book looks like. Everyone about. at that judgment is judged according to their works. According and to their works. And their you know, the, people all say, well, I'm just going to let my work stand, man. Your works are going to, yeah, they're going to be there. <laughs> but, it won't go. but yeah, uh, no, we have the judgment seat of Christ. That's, that's at the, uh, at, right after, I believe it takes place right after the trip, uh, at rapture. Mm -hmm. Because we find when we get to chapter number four, and then in chapter number five, we're in the throne room of heaven, and, and we're already in white robes. So right. that's where the judgment seat of Christ comes in for the believer. Yep. And of course, up there, there's no time. So no. And, Time's an irrelevant factor yeah. in eternity. And, and we deal with that sometimes. Uh, okay. Coming from the scientific aspect that I have, I, I give you that. In a moment, we're going to talk about another one of your, your topics. But let me go ahead and um, one of the things that, that I'm known for is my, my teaching on the seven feasts. Yes. And the Jubilee. My whole ministry revolved around yes. the Jubilee. And back in 2014, my book called God's Final Jubilee, um, that really got me out there. My, my, my understanding of that, and it's, it's really not hard to understand. It's just nobody's But you make a stuff. practical application out yeah. of it. And, and basically the Jubilee is, is, is a Sabbath. It's a giant Sabbath. There are, there, are, there are several Sabbaths in the Bible, but let me just give them the main three. The main three Sabbaths in the Bible, number one is the seven day Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You see that way back in Genesis yes. 1, God rested on, on the seventh day, and, uh, which is Saturday, by the way, not Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second major Sabbath is the seven year Sabbath. Now well, that has to do with agriculture yep. and their farming. They would farm for six years. On the seventh year, they, they didn't farm, they didn't plant anything, and they, that was to let the, the soil regenerate and get its nutrients well, back. They call that the Shemitah? Uh, yeah, and they would call that the Shemitah, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that's every seventh year, and that's, in, boy, there's a lot of a lot important of things, things yes. about that to help and us understand. a lot understand. of prophetic application with yeah. that, yes. And then the third major Sabbath is, in fact, seven of those Shemitah cycles, or I, I call them sabbatical cycles. Right. That's really the, the word Sabbath, the Bible yep. uses. They, they go to the Hebrew and they get that mm -hmm. word Shemitah, and that's fine. But uh, um, you, you multiply seven of those sabbatical cycles, them seven-year cycles, mm -hmm. and you get 49 years. Mm -hmm. And that's where you get to Leviticus chapter 25. Right. You turn the page because the, the, the others are, are given us in Leviticus 23. You get to Leviticus 25 and the Lord tells us that seven times seven or 49 years becomes a jubilee. Yeah. That's a giant Sabbath. That's yeah. the Sabbath of all Sabbaths. On that and, and the entire 50th year is a jubilee. And you also let the land rest. But something right. else happens. All property goes back. Goes back. To the original Amen. Owner. Doc, if you if you sold your house or you or what if you or you went bankrupt and lost your house and you were in Israel in Bible days, on the Jubilee year, you would walk back into your house, the the tenants De would have to leave. Free. 
debt free, the title deed in your hand, yeah. it's yours again. That almost sounds like the book of Revelation. Yeah, it? and that's what's <laughs> going to happen. That's, yeah. what, that's what Christ's coming back on the white horse is. I believe that's what the chapter 5 of Revelation, I agree. the seven seal book is the title deed to the planet. Satan, or Adam was given dominion yeah. over the world. It was his. Absolutely. He forfeited it to Satan. Yeah. And Christ is coming back in a jubilee to take it back. So it's a very important concept. Yeah. And, uh, and there's a lot of that in my Seven Clocks book, my Mystery of the Jubilee yeah. book. Um, and the seven feasts are all intertwined with that. It's all and, intertwined. And the harvest days. The great um, application, the prophetic implications that come out of all of these are just mind boggling. Yeah. So give, give us another, uh, that's some of my topics. Uh, yeah. The great end time distraction, the fallen right. angels, the uh, seven clocks are ticking, well, I, seven feasts. Of course, what have you got? Of course, what else? Being involved in. For 35 years, I've been heavily involved in science and the Bible, creation research. Uh, so uh, anything that has to do with Noah's world, Noah's flood, and those kind of things. Uh, uh, so I have a booklet uh, concerning Noah's, uh, Noah's days. You know, everybody likes to What's use... What's that called? Uh, it's, as it, as, as as it the was? Days, as it was, so it is, and okay. as it is, so it was. That's the key. We've done some shows on that. And that's the key that is given there. And a lot of prophecy ministries like to go to Matthew chapter 24, and there they talk about, uh, uh, you know, as it was in the days of Noah. Well, when you get to the book of Luke, in Luke's record, he says, as it was in the days of Noah, and also as it was in the days of Lot. And what Jesus is doing in that Olivet Discourse is bringing our attention to how two people lived facing impending judgment of God. One lived inside with the world, compromised, lost his family. The other one lived on the outside of the world trying to reach in. And I think the, as the days of Noah is really all about how are we going to live as we're now facing the end of all things. Okay, and I think and, she found that. I think she had and, that uh, up. Yeah, okay. it, it's, a, it's a booklet, and with it is a CD to go with it, a message that I preached. And, and Doc, and I speak a lot on those kind of stuff. Something new we've started doing in the last year, I know you're doing it too, we're writing booklets, 36-page yeah. booklets, 24 yeah. pages. Yeah. Just a booklet that's on a right on a, subject. a topic. A lot of times yeah. I t I'll pull something out of one of my mm -hmm. books. I'll tweak it a little. I'll add mm -hmm. some stuff. And, and make just a booklet that, yeah. that's easy to read. You can easy read it in an read. hour. Well, I don't know how to write anything that's not easy to read for folks, but I, I'm just a farm boy. I tell people everywhere I go preaching, if God had left me alone, I'd still be on the farm. I love farm life. Uh, but I've been... Uh, I've been married uh, almost 54 years this summer, and all of our married life, we've been in the ministry together. Yeah. And so, uh, but yeah, I I don't know how to make anything other than down on the level where I believe everybody can understand it. Yeah, and that's where that's where it needs to be. I, I agree. And uh, so, folks, uh, the website yeah, it scrolls every now and then. You see the website; it, you'll see it up on here. Um, Prophecyinthespotlight.com is how you find us. When you go to the website, everything that we do is on that website. That's good for you to know. Our YouTube channel, for, for instance, if yes. you're watching this program, maybe you come in, it was half over and you missed the beginning and you want to hear us rant and you want to, <laughs> or maybe there's a show you saw and you, you want to watch it again. Um, first of all, you could call, you could order a DVD. Um, we, can, we can make a DVD for you and send it to you. But you know what? All of these, pro all of these programs are on YouTube. Now, this one might not be. I'm not sure we're putting this one on YouTube, but uh, we may. I don't know. Um, but you go to the website, and you can find everything. Our Facebook page is there, Prostin and Spotlight Facebook. The YouTube channel is there. You can see it right on the front page, you can, and, and you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, we have a radio show, a 15-minute radio show we do every week. And uh, it may be on in your area, and you don't even know it. But you can, you can find the information on the website. You can click on radio, and it will tell you all the stations we're on and what time across the country. And um, so that's there, the Facebook page, the what else? Once uh, in a while we're on Rumble. Uh, we're on Rumble. Yeah, because once in a while we say a few things that uh, yeah, there's YouTube some things, doesn't like. Some things you can't put on YouTube because <laughs> we have censorship in America now. Yeah. Um, we thought Russia was the ones that were uh, censoring people. But right here in America, 
And uh, Rumble, uh, what else we've got? Um, a newsletter. I have an email newsletter. And by the way, Doc here has a has a newsletter also. Yeah, it, the Issachar Report every couple of months goes out. It's always on on prophecy current okay. events. Yeah. All right. And podcasts. We have a lot of these shows get put on a podcast. So all of this is on the website. You can go find it. We wanted to take this first show and just introduce ourselves, tell you a little bit about what we do. And uh, we're not greenhorns at this. No, we've been doing this a long time. I've been in the ministry a long time. And uh, I, I grew up under my uncle that I grew up under as a young boy. Uh, was uh, well known for his preaching and teaching on prophecy. So uh, this is something I've I, been a part of my life, all this, and you've been involved heavily with it all these years. And so, uh, folks, we're not coming as somebody just trying to add something. This has been our primary ministry. Yeah. And I still preach out as well. Oh, we all do, yes. And we, uh, we, we do meetings. So if, if you're a pastor or you'd like to talk to us about yeah. speaking at your, at your church or your, um, your event you got coming up, you can contact us uh, through the website or through the phone number or email. And uh, we'd love to talk to you about that. We could both come. Uh, we actually do some do conferences some together. together. <laughs> and we've done several, and we're going to do some more. Or you can just uh, ask Doc to come or me to come, either one. It doesn't matter. And uh, we'd love to talk to you about that. And uh, we do have meetings scheduled, and we'll try to keep you posted. Uh, we both have a, a meeting June 12th coming yeah, up. Yeah, two different uh, directions. I'll be, oh, Michigan. I, that's where I'll be. I'll be in Indiana. I, don't, I can't, can't remember the city off the top of my head. but They all run together after a while, folks, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> my wife will say, where are you at? And I'll say, well, let me, look at the, let me look at the calendar to see where I'm at. I'm not sure. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, so, uh, and I'm, I'll be in Louisville in July, July 24th, I think, at a church just south of Louisville. And I'll be in Iowa in those periods of time. Okay, and uh, so, but we're always here. Every week we're going to be right here. Amen. And we want you, uh, we would love to have you communicate with us. We'd love to get some emails, yeah. text yeah. messages, um, uh, phone calls. We'd Amen. love to know that you're out there because this, this is... The first show. Yeah, man. And, and we need to close with the fact that, hey, we want to make sure you're saved. If you're watching us and you don't know the Lord's your Savior, we, we want you to understand God loves you. He loves you so much he sent Jesus to Calvary's cross. Jesus loves you so much he died on Calvary's cross for you. And if you're not born again, you've never been saved, before, please receive Christ. Your Contact us. We'd be glad to help you. Yep. All right. Well, that's our first show. And you've got a little taste of some of our humor, some of our seriousness, some of our information. I hope uh, I hope you'll listen again next week. And we're going to next week, we're going to just take right off with uh, a prophetic topic and we're going to try to help you. But until then, keep your eyes on them skies.